adjustments as the season goes on. And, and also, I think it makes sense a lot for them because Glister is overall a little bit more flexible than Stalker. And if you can play that Sombra role, great. Then it's even better for their squad overall. So Fusion Uni going to be on this offense first. Or rather, I should say on this defense first. Jinji going to be on the offense. Jinji rolling out with triple DPS. The solo tank over on that Orisa. We are on the May. And with this May versus the Fusion Unity's comp, they're expecting the ability to stop the rush, to stop the 3-3 from engaging onto Oberon, and then set up a key spam. It's an interesting look here for Fusion Unity to still be on 3-3 versus this, because they had to expect that something DPS heavy was on the way out, and DPS comps have been winning this on point A across all maps and game types. And Fusion Unity already under a lot of pressure, the wall keeping them off point to a degree, already one tick towards Gen G, and Fusion Unity kept off the point, Beast Halo sleeping off on the other side, and this is a lot of free progress to Gen G right now. Fusion Uni looking lost. Fusion Uni now re-entering. Haven't used that bubble very early. It's still very low as well for Fusion Uni. Bernard solo under pressure, getting this left detail. No matrix, not a lot of heals. Remember this is Din Lucio, so not a lot of heals now, but a huge pick on the green. Great of already down Gen G. Over and in with Keith finishing it off. Blister very, very close to an EMP. Of course, the ideal for Genji would be to not use it here. Instead, Keith moving forward, Barrage ready. And just gonna use it to immediately go for the Rhine. Beast Halo down, but that's a worthy trade. Rhine down on the other side, now you have to try and deal with the Risa shield. This is so advantageous to Genji right now. They're getting off the point. Can they contest? Can anyone touch? They don't touch! I mean, they, they alarm, he finds, he finds Blizz, he's still in the back line. He finds Creative as well. But the reality is that they're off the point. They didn't get the stop there. I Anytime thought they were I... the trance or anything in there, but they decided just to give it up. Anytime I see a 3-3 lose on point A, I just like hear in my head, I thought we taught you this lesson already, old man. Like, DPS comps generally deal with 3-3 really well in these point A situations, and Fusion Uni, the best they could hope to do there was stall. I think King's Row is definitely a, a map still that enables for 3-3 to be run, but it's more of a question of now, in particular, for... A, first point still probably the best point of the entire map for Triple DPS. And then B, now the situation where here comes the EMP very soon, but Glister, he's a sense of danger. He's gonna back up there, maybe he's hoping for the bait. I, I think it was trying to bait out the Transcendence, but guess what, Snillo's already down. Alarm didn't even realize the trouble, there's no Transcendence, and Fusion Uni just getting picked off one by one, and the EMP not even needing to be used. And the reality is for Fusion Uni, you see, they're holding on to both support ults. They could have committed them, but they neither Elf or Alarm wants to commit a support ult when the EMP is still out on the field. Well, that EMP is still out, if you commit the support ult early, it, it's very tough because they also know that we all is going to have that Blizzard very soon after. The Barrage probably also going to be following up. So it's just a situation where it's a game of chicken. It's a game of ult chicken. Ultimate chicken. Due to the fact that neither support wants to come in ult before Glister drops that EMP. G rolling over the point. Fusion you again make their stand now. Rally out early, but alarm picked off! McKee able to take him down. There will be no transcendence. EMP can be used. And it strikes four. Fusion Uni. They drop the Graviton, desperately trying to swap it. Instead, it's chilly on the point. The blizzard's out. Still out, getting frozen, done, and over with. This is a speed run coming in from Gen G. And that was potentially still salvageable for Fusion Uni if Alarm was alive. Sadly, Alarm was not alive. So even with the perfect ult usage there of Elf making sure not to be caught and using that grab there and the rally, they can't sustain through that fight. The Blizzard is out. They just did not have the trance, most importantly. So for Jinji, though, they blew most of their ults. They do not have any of their fight winners. They do have a... They do have the Supercharger. But Supercharger versus Transcendence, I'll take the Transcendence there. A lot of this for this upcoming fight is going to be, look at the shield presence, look how they set up Bernard's bomb. I imagine Oberon might, set, might save the hole here. Going to drop the bomb, go early, going to drop the Supercharger. Look to try the to Supercharger's get down. Defense. Shield broken, Supercharger's done, so not much impact there, but Gen.G still trying to rotate with Fuji in the bad spot. Bernard almost getting team back here. As pressure comes in, the wall splits. Bernard has to drop the self-destruct on point, but it's not going to be very effective at all. Flying Ice Block, we all down. It's an interesting interaction there, to put it mildly. And I mean, Snillo! You hand deliver the May. You hand deliver the May to Snillo. <laughs> uh, actually, decent comeback from Snillo. Still able to take down two. Buying Fusion Uni, decent amount of time here. But, man, this has been a tough beginning.
And by the way, Fusion Uni only able to turn the tide after swapping off 3-3. Three, three. Jinji gonna make them swap their own here. Going to the Sombra Goat setup, Blister is about to have EMP created, about to have Nano. And look at Fusion University's old bank. I mean, they have nothing. They have almost nothing to deny this. The, the Infrasight will buy them some time in terms of being able to scout for Blister. But they have no defensives. This entire push is going to be very reliant on Stilo and Nice being able to find some early picks. If they can't find anything early, it's very unlikely they're able to win that post fight. Infrasight is up. Stilo desperately looking for one pick off here to turn the tide. Nice drops Dragon Strike right down the middle. Gen G. Give it a little bit of respect. They wait. But now they can move in with the MP. Still, though, able to find creative. Creative peaked. It pays the price. And that's that's exactly what they needed. That's exactly what Fusion needed. They need to find one pick there. And creative is probably one of the best. Ruin the fuck support. The Infrasight was also keeping Blister under control because he was afraid to commit it. He's still being revealed. So now Fusion Unity, they built up the bomb. They're about to have Valk. Valk good against EMP engages. And Jinji, they're going to have to wait a little bit. They're going to make the swap. Creative going to the Zen. They don't have any other ults besides the EMP. Snow has been the one giving Fusion University new life here on point C. Minute 51 left to go. Blister still hanging on to the EMP as Genji tries to get good position. Oberon and Wuyal just getting beaten up on entry. You have to spend some time healing as Blister goes to the back. This foot is so good, DP. This foot is so good. Though, as I say that, there are hard work teams. Beast Halo, Beast is going to go down. Beast goes down. Genji getting decent progress here. Oberon still somehow alive. If Oberon gets healed up, this is winnable for Genji. Resurrection up. But Oberon getting healed. Not quite probably up. Transcend is going to be used. Blister drops EMP. The time's now for Genji. But Oberon gets blown up. Can't get away from the self destruct. Down Oberon. Fusion Uni gets back on the point. Stillo, this is a Reaper alert. Emergency Reaper heading on to the point. And Fusion Uni gonna be repelling Gen G once more. Not only repelling, but didn't have to commit transcendence. Did not have to commit transcendence in that fight. The EMP was extremely lackluster from Blister. The E wasn't even able to deny Bernard getting back into the mech. Now Gen G, they've lost their win condition for that fight. They've lost the EMP. They're in a situation where they can enter this next fight and alarm. We'll still have transcendence. Their support ults will not be as strong here. Bliss's beat and also Wakid's rally. Because transcendence can sort of mitigate the value for both. With Beast also having that early supercharger, there's an opportunity for them to drop it and just try to shred tanks. Because still, he's on this Reaper. Beat can be used early by Gen G. They take the initiative. They move on forward. Elk already caught and down. Six on five for Gen G. Rally can be invested. Bomb making more space at the point. Fusion Union. They have to use Rally just to get test for alarm to get into a better spot. Beast Halo down. Genji swarming onto the point and it's just Snillo. One of the last remaining here is Reaper versus the world. Here at the point, buying a decent amount of time, but does not look to be enough. Hammond in towards the end, but Genji an overwhelming edge at the point now. But they finish with time! Oh, no. That was 1.5 seconds that Fusion Unity needed to delay. And there it is. Time of the clock, and there it is. The, the saying as it goes, and there it is. And realistically, an incredibly good opening there for Jin G, using the beat up very aggressively, moving in onto that back line. I have to question the validity of the Reaper. So I do have to question the validity of Reaper. Because I guarantee you, in that scenario, the Fusion Unity back line probably survives. They probably don't have to use Trance that early if they have a Brigida or something of that nature, rather than a Reaper. Uh, it, I think their plan was to play around the supercharger and have Snillo shred the tanks. But Jin G, they sort of just read through that plan and said, let's run past the Orisa, say <laughs> bye bye, supercharger, we have a beat, and go to your back line. So I have to ask here you, you mentioned, okay, you, you questioned the Reaper pick. Is there any situation in Overwatch you can conceive of where you would not question the Reaper pick? Yes, there there is. If you're playing, let's say, if the enemy team is playing like duo tank hog Winston, that's that the one perfect time, perfect time for Reaper there. So, so there is one scenario that you would be okay with. Well, I mean, also, I mean, also, if it's, if it's, if it's, pretty much if there's a scenario in which Diva does not exist, in which Brigida does not exist, you know, any it, it, in most comps currently, you're not going to be finding a scenario where neither Diva or Brigida is not in it. So that's why really I say no to Reaper. I say no to Reaper, and you should too. Oh, I do. I just wanted to get the rant out of you. So that's a PSA. Yeah, that's, that's a PSA to everyone. 
<laughs> That's really just a direct PSA. The education coming on here early in the morning if you're in the U.S. watching. So of course, people watching from all around the world. Gen G. Right now, defending on the Sombra, but all right, Oberon's down immediately. Fusion Union just rushes in. They win the tank battle, and Genji's they're in a really rough spot. I think this is point A already, the Fusion Uni. With the D-back on a Bernard, there's a chance to recontest here. Blister, he's getting a lot of value from the poke. 70% on the EV already. Are they going to get back in, though, to contest, though? Are they going to be able to stop this? And it looks like, no, they're not going to be able to. Wakid, he tried to make a mad dash, and he gets picked up. And now this is very, very good for Genji, because look at this high energy. Nice. He's going to walk forward, and he's not going to stop. This is the classic walk forward, you know you have an advantage. And Gen G, that was a weakness. Anytime you run a Sombra 3 2 1 setup, is that you are at risk of getting dove upon by a more standard 3 3 setup. Even though I, I say standard, but we've really deviated away from it. But the old standard 3 3 setup is still good in the early opening fight against the Sombra. But for Jinji, they do have a couple options here, a couple gambits. They have they have an EMP, they have a nade, they have the grab to try to force Transcendence early and then set up the EMP. There's a lot of options here for Jinji to counter Alarm Transcendence and just look for this early engage. But they don't have to look for the early engage. They can play a little slow right now. Blister, EMP's ready. The goal here for Genji, of course, is restabilized. This fight going to be incredibly crucial to that. You need your EMP fights to go well. Fighting the time, Blister lucky not to get picked off by the air and fire strike. Graviton in from Fusion Uni, they're taking the initiative. This is usually good when up against EMP. Nano Boost though, gonna be invested here by Gen G. Beast Halo down. And they get to roll forward, and more importantly, they get to save the EMP. Great discipline there from Gen G. To, they didn't decide to commit either the grab or the EMP. See, Bernard is getting staggered here. Some more time off the clock for Gen G. And a good, a good use of Nano there from Creative as well. Using that nano to keep himself alive. Bliss didn't even have to commit the beat either. So being able to sustain through that fight and move forward here where they can now set up the EMP Shatter. And EMP Shatter is a much more effective combination here versus the Transcendence without having to have to commit the grab before. Just dropping that EMP Shatter. Really, really huge. I mean, Fusion University is about to take a trip to the ultimate washing machine in all likelihood because they're going to walk forward. And you're right, EMP Shatter is the most likely way that this fight ends. Where, yeah, okay, they don't hit Alarm. But they hit everyone else with the EMP Shatter, and that's enough. Beast Halo already down, and Alarm decides, you know what? I'm not going to transcend here. It's not worth it. Yeah, Alarm knows better. Alarm knows better than even commit to the transcendence there. Because you commit the transcendence there, and what happens? You all get anti right after. And then you <laughs> die regardless. So it's definitely a situation where you don't commit the transcendence. Now the EMP is gone. The Shatter is gone. This is a scenario you can be much more liberal with your ults. We will we'll have the grab. So realistically, you probably want to try to be able to use this beat in the grab and then transcend after if you have to, because you know that Cradle will be looking for Nano. You know they're going to be, or not for Nano, but rather for Nade, and looking for Nano afterwards to try to clean up. Fusion Uni pushing forward, Gen G giving a decent amount of spaces. Glister at 45%. Glister almost about to fall, just barely able to get out. And they might have EMP for next fight, the way this is setting up. But nope, they're going to use Graviton, they're going to force the issue now. They force out the beat from Fusion Uni. Genji, not getting too much run. It's a super late nano onto Oberon. I wonder if that was even intentional. It was just so delayed. Now they're caught and grabbed the bomb backwards to the side. We all down. And Genji in real danger, even as they're coming up on the EMP. I think they're going to commit. They're going to commit now. Alarm, he manages to stay away. He stays far away from this. Trance is out. This fight it should be winnable. Should be won for Fusion Uni. Oberon down. EMP gone, they have full control of the card here. They have all the health that they need. They have that armor from Silo as well. Can they get any early pickoffs though? Can they get any late pickoffs? Any staggers to stop Jinji from touching? Jinji is actually not even be able to touch it either way. Really good engage for Fusion Uni there. And, and definitely a questionable nano from Creative. He was hoping they were able to get more value there. They weren't able yeah, to I don't think it was that. intentional. I, I really think it was a fat finger there because given where Ryan was, it made no sense to nano there. None. Now Jinji, they're gonna have to look for a recon test here. Not a little to the board. They will have another nano. They will have a shatter. They just need to play the right game here with Beastillo. He's hacked. Is Oberon going to look for the shatter? No, he's not. Because he knows that Nice is saving the bubble for it. Shatter from Oberon. That's going to connect right down the middle. And Gen G throwing out Fusion Uni here. But Fusion Uni, they've set a decent time so far. Three minutes left. It is well within their capabilities of setting a quicker time. The problem, though, is, is that in terms of vault cycles, well, guess what? They have to go against EMP next. Yeah, it's the, it's the ult washing machine. It's the ult cycle here. It's, 
It's now time for Fusion Unity to make some adjustments. Oh, Alarm actually gonna go Ana here. I like the Ana swap. He was he didn't have Transcendence just yet. Having the Ana gives him another opportunity there for a fight win. Five man EMP. I think it's a six man. Yeah, it hits everyone towards the end. Beast Halo down. And that's just a super quick dispatch and exactly what you're looking for off the EMP. And for Fusion Unity, that's probably one of the worst case scenarios there for them. Because they tried to engage early with grab. They knew that Booster had EMP. They're like, okay, let's grab first. Let's try to get some early clean off. And they weren't able to get anything out of it. And Creative, he's just gone Zin. Creative's gone Zin here as well. Shatter in from Beast Halo. Fusion Unity trying to take the initiative. The Bio Nate strikes two in the back. All through, not there. That we all lives to use the Graviton. The Graviton is the fight winner. Gen G able to turn things back in their favor. Oh, this is so incredibly grim for Fusion Uni ZP. They lose this fight after they committed the Shatter. And look at Jinji's ults here. They've gone Zin, which is so great in this situation considering that there's no there's no stop for Fusion Uni, so it's a lot harder for them to consistently get antis to set up the combo to deny transcendence value. So they're gonna have a lot better shield break. They're gonna have that transcendence value. And Glister already has another EMP. Fusion Unity, they need to play split here. They need to make sure that not everyone is caught. But the EMP shatter is so strong, even with double support ult. Fusion Unity going to be heading over into that scenario. Genji holding off on the EMP, looking to set up Oberon. Glister biding his time. Fusion Unity gonna commit, they move forward. The EMP strikes, the shatter right after. Fusion Uni, Alarm gets knocked back, but Fusion Uni is withstanding here. It's a well-timed beat from Elk, and Beast Halo takes down two! Gen.G over commits! And Fusion Uni, they dealt with that perfectly, now they have a chance to set a quicker time. I like how Fusion Uni played that, where not only did they put a lot of shield pressure there onto Overrun, but they also used the Nano a little bit earlier rather than using it reactively, because they wanted to have that extra damage, have that extra sustain earlier on in the fight, to set up the position to set up the close fight. Genji against the wall here. They have to transcend the buy time for Wu Yao's EMP. Nice though! Knocked into the pit! That's a huge swing in the fight! And Wu Yao, ready to go. It's four on four. Graviton set up. Gonna dodge the bomb, move back over. Not, they might not even need the grab here to get rid of Fusion Uni. Fusion Uni, they've just lost too many people. The respawns are coming on in. And it's the final 30 seconds for Fusion Uni to extend out King's Row. They need to back out. They need to regroup for Bernard. He's gonna go down a little late. And this following fight, 20 seconds left on the clock for Fusion Unity to get some time. They have double support ult. Blister not on that, not on that Sombra anymore, but look at the ult for Jin G. They have Zarya ult, they have grab, they have rally, they have beat. So many ults here for Jin G to enter, in order to survive. You got to be an incredible amount of value for both these portals for Fusion Unity. This is a series online for Fusion Unity. If Jin G wins this, that's it. Beast Halo under heavy pressure early. The Graviton can be used by Gen.G. The beat to keep them all secure. And Fusion Uni repelled. Gen.G continues their undefeated streak. They take King's Row. And Fusion University cannot bring back this series. Done and over with. And that is the series done. Because you remember the last map was a draw. Last map was a draw on Volskaya. So with a 2-0 scoreline, even if Fusion Unity win the final map, it's 2-1. The series is over. Jinji continuing undefeated. And Fusion Uni, once again, I mean, it definitely seemed like they're trying to force 3-3 in these scenarios. Because that's where they've been very dominant on. But Jinji on the map where they can say, like, no, let's not play 3 Let's play Triple DBS. Let's play let's play Orisa Hog. Let's play Hero King's Roll. We'll play Triple DBS for triple deeps for first. We'll make the swap go Sopra goes to the majority of the rest of the map for defense. If you really struggle to break it, they struggle to break the old cycle here. I'm just gonna do some meme twisting here, and there's a funny meme in the West going, ah, you know, Korea, they're just playing old and arthritic goats and all that sort of talk. It's like, you know what's looking old and arthritic right now? Fusion University trying to run 3 3 into these compositions. It does not make sense. As a result, Gen G takes a series, but we still have one more map to go for map score. We'll be back in just a few moments to see how that unfolds. The series is over. Gen G triumphing over Fusion University. However, Fusion Uni looking at just the road to get into playoffs, where even though right now they're still positioned to where they should be able to get in, maps, especially if they drop a match to a team that you wouldn't expect them to drop a match to. So, Fusion Uni still a lot to play for here as we look towards map four. I mean, Fusion Uni, they, they, it's very important that they continue to try to take maps where they can. But most importantly, realistically, uh, they need to just adapt, I think, a little bit here. They're having some trouble adapting against Shinji's style. 
I, I think they definitely had a lot of trouble with the somber groups there at King's Row. And, and it seems like they just feel they just they have the the taste of an A on them. They have the taste of an A on them, ZP. There's no other way to describe it. It's just it's a squad that's been stomping an A for the longest time. And they come up against Korean contender teams. They're like, wow, this is not only a different meta, but the style of competition, the level of competition is just so much higher here. So they're definitely struggling so far. But it is important for them to try to pick up this last map of the series, like you talked about, because map score will likely matter considering where they're sitting at in the standings. I love how it's just like, you know, they've gotten rich and well-fed off of NA the entire time, but little did they know, NA had this bitter aftertaste as they go to Korea. And it's it's been tough for them. I mean, they're 1-3 now. It, when you look at the overall standings, and I would say the biggest thing, though, that has hurt them more than anything else is that it's not that they've dropped off dramatically compared to how they're playing in NA, but the meta has shifted, and Fusion Uni so far has been a team that has been reluctant to shift with the times. So we're getting in here to Dorado as our final map in the series, our fourth map with Jinji up 2-0 because there was a draw earlier on Volskaya. And Fusion Uni, they're playing for map score now. Jinji also playing for much of the same though because Jinji are so high up in the standings now, especially with the series win. It's unlikely. I think there has to be like an incredible confluence of events for them to ever even come close to potentially dropping out of playoff contention. No, I, I don't think they can. I think four wins uh, seals the deal. I think, it, I, yeah, it's okay. So, it's sealed, yes, so they, they can't even, yeah. they can do whatever they want now. But they're sealed in. But they'd obviously like to continue to work for the number one seed if possible. We'll have to see what happens there. Well, I think if any playoffs is going to be incredibly just variable, it's probably going to be the one that's coming up soon for Korean contenders because the top six are still incredibly close overall, where Fusion Uni even though they've made questionable decisions here, it's also not as if they've gotten blown out, where before everyone hops on the train of, ah, Fusion Uni is washed, Fusion Uni is bad, they took 0-2 Blast to five maps just recently. And Also, I mean, the King's Row yeah. as well, just that we just watched, was a matter of, you know, just a couple, couple meters there. A little bit of the time bank. Uh, it's been very close. Really, the only map so far in the series that hasn't been that close is the control. And even then, it was, like, not a blow -up. Yeah, so I don't think Fusion University is necessarily completely outclassed, but they've had real trouble finishing out close situations because they've been tested in a way that they never really were in North America. Jinji playing 3-3 setup here. That's Goodbye. Blister. He gets caught, yeah. He gets a lot of damage early. Gets caught by the hull. Bye-bye, Blister. Evaporated in the window. And already Jinji, they need to back up. They can't get in without the bubbles. They need Blister's damage to try to finish off anything in the fight, especially while created by Ana. They don't have that extra shield break, that extra focus fire that Zen gives. Fusion Uni, they're on this bunker setup. And who would have thought it, but Fusion Uni looking a lot better right now on something more DPS focused. I think this is the type of style that, beyond the upcoming changes for playoffs, something that they should be playing right now. It also helps that they're playing into a setup where Jinji is. It, what a Bionade! It's very. The Bionade! Nice! Cleaning up what Alarm sets up! Gen G can't heal and the dragon is completely on top of them. That was devastating. Well played by Alarm and Nice. Yeah. It was a very good bio day, but also you can't forget that B Sailor he halted the ball into the dragon as well for the engage. So just a triple threat set up there. Is they're gonna get a late D-Mech out of Wuyah? He'll probably just reset, I imagine. He should just reset. But instead they're chasing Bernard! He goes so deep! He gets anti and he gets picked off! Bernard's gone and he's not within res range. Fusion Uni, they're gonna have to back up. We all is still not in mech, but Jinji are definitely in a position where they can just move forward and look for the engage. That's exactly what they're gonna do. Oberon using the primal here early. Beast Halo down. Supercharger thrown away. And Oberon going even deeper. This is a little bit risky, and yeah, I, I think Oberon realizes it and goes, okay, let's just go back to the payload. Objective is the name of the game, and Fusion Uni they have a real tough time trying to recontest. I don't think they will. No, they're not gonna recontest. Twister, not the high energy though right now, but 75% to this grab. As Fusion Uni, they swap Beast and for the Hammond. It's Snillo. He just guns down Blister there, right on the choke. Blister done early. Nice. For the Dragon Strike and waiting and be forcing Oberon back. And I do like the double sniper setup here for defending on Dorado. And Oberon has to be so careful on the engage. If they, if Blister does not, whenever Blister gets grabbed and if they do not win the immediate fight, he should swap. This is my professional opinion. It's great. If he goes down, he drops the Nano, but he goes down for it. Oberon, he's running around looking for anyone. He's like, hey, please, I'm Nano and I want to get a kill, but he can't. He can't find anyone. 
That's Glacius a sad dashes nano. away. Right it's, a very, it's a very sad nano. And Glister, he's slowly but surely building up towards this grab. And if they do not win that fight for the grab, he needs to swap. Well, they somehow get alarmed. Gen G able to make lemonade out of lemons there. Moving forward, Oberon gonna use Primal, builds another. No small part. Dude, they're just getting some decent poke damage. Moving forward, looking for Stillo. Stillo trying to grapple out of the way. Does just that, but no! Still gets caught! Oberon somehow find the last little bits, and Gen G has somehow pierced through. The cards have been moving this entire time. They still have Rally to stay in this fight as well. Stillo will be res with Glister. He's coming back. This is the rally engage from Wakid. There are no defensive opportunity besides this nano that Alarm's gonna have to use, but Elf's already down. Elf gets caught. Fusion Uni just getting staggered left, right, and center. They were in such a good position. And Gen G just being scrappy, making their own opportunities. And Gen G just staying on the payload, dominating. Wakid just swinging the flail. Oberon still somehow alive. Gets the upper pack on Anti, so yeah. total waste. Yeah, and Oberon we'll dies as a result. This is a problem. I mean, Bliss is gonna have to invest the, the beat now with the bomb. Wasn't even close, Blister. He's finally gonna use the grab. The grab gonna clean up Elf, gonna clean up Alarm. But Blister's down. This is still very winnable for these Uni, but I have the Supercharger, and they are going to win it. Nice with four. Nice just completely cleaves through Gen G at the very end. And oh man, just the subtle fails there of Armor Pack onto Bionated Winston. That, that will haunt. That surely should haunt Wakid at night. And Glister, he spent all that time building towards that grab, finally gets it off, but they lose the fight. So he's gonna have to swap anyway. He's gonna go to that Sombra. So Sombra goes here for Jinji with creative on the Zen. The hard part is just gonna be getting back to this point in a position where they can actually contest because the double sniper with the Mercy Pocket, it is so tough to just get in to not lose a pick. In addition to that, that it's very tough for this composition to effectively contest Beast. Because it's the Arisa with Bernard giving him that Matrix, and he's just so invincible at times almost. This is one of the very best double sniper points in the entire game. Just so much verticality to take advantage of. So many areas run to when you're under pressure. And Gen G looking for their opening here again. And Oberon just down. Nice. He'll land the last shot. And this delays Gen G significantly more. So Jin G, they're committing to this rotation. They're actually going all the way to spawn. What? They chase Sanillo. They're committing to this fight. Oberon's going to come back on the Hammond. This is probably one of the best pick. This is probably the best thing they could have done there. They definitely made some lemonade out of lemons. And that they just committed to go to the spawn and find Sanillo. Now they're going to set the engage. Well, if nothing else, it's definitely juicy. Nice. Going to drop the Dragon Strike right down the middle. Force up the Transcendence. Good Dragon to force the trade. Fusion Uni, though, not out of the woods here yet. Bernard hacked Beast Halo down. Gen G in really good spot. The rally leading the way. The EMP in reserve. And Fusion Uni. Still or nice. Don't get a pick soon. That's going to be it. Nice, though. Gets one. That's the start. But now it's all on nice. But the rest of Gen G just cleaning up at will. Great engage there for Gen G. Really, really good rotation. Blister's going to drop the EMP just because. Just say, let's finish it out. We need to finish this point. I don't think it was necessarily 100% required, but it did make sure the point was secured. The so second going the way for Jinji, off of that rotation, fighting Silo, setting up their engage when Oberon comes back on the Hammond. It's a good hack for Blister. Now Fuji is going to make a swap for the road. They're going to go probably full 3 3 here when they see this. That's exactly what they're doing. They're putting Alarm onto the net, onto the arm, they're keeping there. Still going to be a tough fight for Fuji It's completely old neutral for Blister, under a bit of assault there. 26% towards EMP, and they'll have time for maybe one final EMP here. Creative gets slept. Still in the back, Uni. pretty far though. Yeah. Fusion Uni, though, kind of looking like they wanted to engage off that, but it was way too far back. And now, Gen G off the rotation, bomb to the back. Look at Beast Halo, fully displaced, just barely able to charge away. Gen G, they're not stopping. They get another two, they move on in. Oberon leading the way, and Fusion Uni just fully flummoxed by that bomb opening. I think that that was, uh, that was the bomb opening. It definitely wasn't the most effective in terms of getting the damage or the frags. But the displacement, the follow-up for Genji was perfect. They all made sure to come forward. Now, Fusion Unity, they have to re enter this point versus the EMP versus the double support ult. Alarm, he's going to be their only defensive ult here. The Nano is out, though, on, on a Beast. EMP used early. Nano onto Beast. Beast already down. Transcendence in from creative. Genji, we're going to end this here and now. Oberon deals with the spawn. This is going to be Gen G setting a pretty quick time on Dorado here. So long as they can get Brigitte out of the way, Fusion Uni still trying to delay Emergency Hammond in. But this bomb could be the finisher in or the top. Quite high for a bomb here. As Fusion Uni, they're getting more back onto the point. Gen G still stable.
but it's good delay from Fusion Uni regardless. Can they get it down though? Can they get down the time make even more? Can they get it to OT? It doesn't really matter in the end, but it still be nice to get that extra delay. And the answer is no, they do not. But again, it's also Escort, so really it's just a matter of pride if you delay to OT, no matter what, to the other team finishes again on the attacking round. Just Although that was nice to get that extra time. Yeah. We have nothing else we're seeing for Gen G here between this and King's Row. Uh, they finish with time left, even if it's uh, under 10 seconds. You see the EMP there go out. And even with that Nano there, Oberon just sets up the Shatter. As it gets the cleanup there, that's exactly what they needed. It keeps everyone out of that fight. It gets the early frags. And despite some trouble, a little bit of trouble there for a second, their first and third looked exceptionally clean for Gen G. The reality is, I think first, it sort of just went the way that if Bernard just doesn't have that overextension on first, we could be looking at a very different map. Because Bernard just I went fully a little agree. bit deep. Fully agreed. And Fusion Uni at times looked incredibly dominant on their defense, particularly the early part of point A, the middle of point B. Point B was just a very chaotic set of circumstances where Gen G gets one pick off and Fusion Uni rotates a weird way and then they lose another and then Fusion Uni essentially got staggered all the way to the apex of point B. And normally they would have had probably a better showing throughout all of that, but it's also the fact that now that we're running more DPS heroes, it's not always a clean game of team fight reset team fight. Sometimes you get stuck in a long scrappy engagement that doesn't quite end. So Jinji now going to be on this defense. They're playing double shield. We are on the Arisa Oberon on the Rhine with Wakid with a with triple. They're playing triple support, double shield. This is, we've seen bunker composition. We move beyond bunker. We move beyond. We're in castle. We're in castle we, composition. We've got the castle. There. It's upgrade. We are, full, we are in fortress. We're in full fortress composition here for Jinji. And Fusion Unity, they see this comp. I, this is one of the ideal times where it actually might, it, triple DPS would definitely work. I always feel like a quad DPS setup here versus this could still be reasonable. No siege for the castle, as it turns out. Beast Halo, moving forward. Uh, Genji already in a rough spot. Blister, very close to falling. No, Genji's been herded into this room. They've set up the castle. But that's where they want to be. That's where they want to be, TP. Look at what he, 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 he relishes it. He looks for the opportunity to use his immortality field to drop those huge AOA heals. That nade from Alarm, though, is pretty big, but it still doesn't matter because their health pool is so beefy. They have so much sustain. The real problem is if the cart moves past this door. The, the payload is about to move past the door. That's why they're struggling so much and just getting beaten up in the doorway. We're going to have to retreat to the next doorway. But Amplication Matrix out. He just snipes down nice. That was well executed from Batiste. The resurrection is up, but Gen G, they have the moment they needed, and now they can push out a little bit. They can leave the castle and get sustenance elsewhere. That's their whole goal, though, is that they want to play slow for an Amplification Matrix, get one pick off of it, which is exactly what they do. Now they have Nano. They're coming up on Grab, even, which is inconceivable, partially just, but this is only just partially because Fusion are starting to play double tank into this. I think it's tough for Bernard to really find a lot of value here, unless the bomb is going to be huge, which it, it's tough to be huge when there's two, there's two shield bubbles and an immortality field. Genji, holding back, Graviton ready, Fusion Uni, looking for the right entry, and bear in mind, Barrage still might be pretty effective here in well-timed. Oberon, though, Nano's out of the castle, goes way far away, meanwhile, Barrage gets two on the other side, and look at that, did that connect with him mid-air? It did connect with him mid-air, it did indeed, but the thing is that it doesn't matter if no one can shoot him. How does Genji follow up off the Nano far that's being pocketed? Because they have no damage. They have no damage, unless the Amplification Matrix is out. Or maybe they have a high-charged blister that was nano. Uh, you know, here's the thing. You don't have to grab far the keeper in place mid-air. She's going to do that on her own when she presses Q. Oh, that's, Unnecessary. See, that's, the that's the problem with Fortress. The problem with Fortress, it's really good at holding the place. But how do you remove any heroes? How do you remove any heroes? How do you get the frags? Because you, you are simply just walls. You're just a bunch of walls. You have no cannons. So now Junji making a full swap here. They're gonna go Sombra Goat to now put Blister onto that Sombra over and onto the Winston. We go onto the Diva. So a lot more area denial for them, but they're running into a fusion unit that has a relatively charged ult bait. They have EMP of their own. It's gonna be tough to get in. It's gonna be tough to find a frag. They're in a really nice spot. Oberon gonna fall immediately. Genji trying to get something going. Doesn't happen. 
still use the EMP to deny that push, so at the very least they get that out of Fusion University. But Fusion Uni, working with a bit of momentum here, three minutes left on the clock, decent time through point B. And Genji not working with a lot of tools for next fight either. Jinji having to enter this point against a Fair Mercy comp and the Nano is going to be available for the barrage. It's going to require a great beat from Bliss to allow them to enter. They could use it aggressively to maybe find someone, but it's unlikely unless a hat comes out. More than likely going to have to be used defensively here and hope creative can get the Nano. Nice. Going to be getting hacked, brought down to Earth for a time. Barrage though, ready. Get profit away from we all. Here comes Genji, they're gonna open up with the beat it's fairly aggressively. Fusion Uni just backs out and says, Alright, that's cool. And Obra gets slapped! Gets nano, gets slapped! The trump card here for Genji in a world of hurt. Now the nano's fading. Oberon just barely able to get away with his life. And Fusion Uni well set up for the coup de gras here on point B. As we see, he's Halo in on the primal. The barrage strikes, we keyed out of it. Nice stuff down. Genji though, they've lost too much lost a lot. Oberon, he has the primal delay here on the point, but Fusion Uni, they still have Oak alive, they still have Alarm alive. Slowly but surely this fight's gonna go their way. The focus card is gonna be so much stronger for them. And Genji, they're, they're being brought back here. This is a very fast time for Fusion Uni on this offense so far, especially comparatively. Over three minutes on the clock. They are finally gonna have that EMP. They're, pro they're swapping creative to the Zen now. I, I think the Zen is a tough Thing to do nope. that. Okay, good. Yeah, they're gonna go back to the Ana. That makes a little bit more sense for me, at least. So they do have a Regita, but I still prefer the Ana. Fusion Uni, they're still holding on to their EMP. We'll have a Nano, we'll have a Bomb, a lot of resources for them in this fight. Alarm hacked early, can't use the Nano in response. Nil, can use the EMP and Genji, hits five. Blister immediately down. And Fusion Uni, man advantage here. Not only gonna be getting more progress, but the Nano's good to go so long as Alarm isn't just randomly picked off. It's more of a question of now, I mean, Glister has EMP for this fight. Alarm will have to play for it. Split, he's gonna need to play Split, gonna have to set up his Nano to bomb out for Bernard as well for the peel. And it the, gets it's two. such a good bomb, gets two! The reaction bomb for Bernard punishes Gen G! The Nano out for Alarm while this is going on. Bomb though, takes out Beast Halo, Beast Halo gets caught, so does Bernard, Bernard loses mech. However, Fusion Uni still a bit of pressure here on the point. They force Genji the beats. Genji, Nano of their own set up. Bernard down and Genji, they're gonna hold for now. Dagger Kill is gonna be coming out of here. They should be able to pick up these frags. Slowly getting a lot of EMP charge. Nice, we'll have Rally for the following fight. So you're gonna be looking for this EMP engage. You're gonna be looking to see for Yumi just enter with the Rally. The question though is that they need to be able to deny Wakid the, the Rally of his own and catch Creative. Because Creative's just gonna wait split. Just gonna wait split, gonna drop that Nano there. It's a question of can you focus down Jinji? Oberon gonna move in off the Nano, chasing down Fusion Uni, and Fusion Uni just kind of walking away. Oberon getting booped away. Getting booped again! The denial! Oberon finally using Primal. He's had enough. You feel the rage going in there, but the EMP to back. Six man EMP! In! From still on to Genji. Glister falling as a result. And Genji getting a bit low. Fusion Uni, though, unable to really clean it up the way they would have liked. And now, a big nade, alarm goes down, well done by Creative, Genji pulls it back. The reality is, is that while Oberon, he may have been getting pooped, but he was still taking the cooldowns, drawing the presence away, and he was able to bring the backline forward with that primal. And then when Zill drops the EMP, Wakid, he'd already rallied. The armor's already out, and guess what? EMP does not strip armor. Does not strip the rally armor. And Genji, they just sustain long enough to hit the nade to get the frags they needed, because Elf went down early, there was no beat. So Fusion Uni, they have to re-enter this point a less than a minute on the clock. They have beat, they have rally, they have a bomb, so they definitely have weak conditions, but Blister has an EMP. Elk, he's gonna need to hide. They're gonna commit to this fight. Elk's gonna have to hide. He needs to make sure that Glister's EMP does not catch him. Final attempt here for Fusion Uni. 39 seconds in the Bionade from Alarm Strikes 4. The fall through though, not there. Gen G gonna shrug it on off. In fact, Gen G now the slight window. Let's go back the other way if they want. Final 20 seconds here, the engage is on. Let's roll on to the EMP, the bomb from Bernard, up and over. Makes Blister think twice, Bliss is down. Gets caught. And now EMP in reaction to the pressure, but the beat from Elk is so good! Fusion Uni, all six up, still moving into the point. Wuyal's down, and that beat from Elk saves. Still drops that EMP. Oberon, he gets nice, the beat is used for Bliss as well. So there is some stall potential, Alarm dies as well. Oberon, he's healthy. He's still very healthy. There's still a chance for Genji to get out here and contest. They have Wukid there. Wuyol's coming back with a bomb. 
It's not done just yet. Though it's looking likely. Uni on the verge of finishing on overtime. Sending us next rounds. Let's get a little bit more. Genji though flooding back onto the point. Emergency Doomfist not quite working. And Hammond stalling along with D.Va, but Fusion Uni, they've all set up. Everyone's back here to the point. They're getting the last little bit of cleanup they need. And Genji, nothing left in the tank. We're going to extra rounds. And Elk did exactly what he needed to do there. The Crucible there just not getting caught by the EMP, though really I can look back to Bernard's bomb. Bernard's bomb being used there aggressively because Fusion Uni forced them into a fight. Channels them into Bernard's bomb, gets an early pick off, and forced Lister to try to drop that EMP in a situation he didn't want to. And they don't just had a very good beat. So good read there from Yuji Uni. When you know that you're walking into an EMP, you know you have beat, and you can force them into a fight where you can get more value from your ults and force them to EMP in an unfavorable position. They're going to be much more set up to win, and that's exactly what they did. So now we move in the next rounds. We're a reminder Gen G, they've already won the series, Fusion Uni. There's no uh, situation where they defy math itself. Uh, we have Sigma defying gravity, but there's no hero that defies math just yet. However, the, math yeah. the true boss of Overwatch. The true boss, the true raid boss there is math. Just wait for the calculator hero, it's coming. But uh, Fusion Uni, they still want to win the map here because we've already seen in Korean Contenders how much a single map can decide whether or not you get into playoffs or not. Uh, ask MVP Space how they feel about that one. That that will always be brought up for eternity, is that MVP Space example of map score. It's the best example. You'll never have a better example of map score coming back than just ruin a team. I will proudly bring that up in perpetuity. So Jinji do defend first here because they did have a slightly faster time. As Fusion Unity, they walk out, they see this composition. And they say, let's play triple tank with Genji Widow. And I say, maybe not that one, Fusion Uni. And that is correct. Okay, good. Gonna go back and swap. Decide to play the double sniper. Have alarm on the hog. This is definitely a little bit better setup for Fusion Uni if they can get the space, if they get the angles they need. Because that Hanzo, great for the shield presence, great for trying to get the flanks. is gonna feel pressured here from Snow's Widow. Fusion Uni, focus on the objective. Hook and a miss from alarm. Genji waiting to bring their might to bear as soon as Fusion Uni gets out from under the archway. Roki will have a lot more room to work with on the Fara. All took, blocked by the shield, but on the other side, Snillo gets Blister. McKean down the double snipers of Fusion Uni, striking deeply at Genji. And this could be a very quick movement into the courtyard. Genji in real danger. Getting first with a minute on the clock is, is huge on Dorado. Dorado first, such a hard point to break at times, and being able to get it with a minute is already a win condition. That's already a huge win condition. It, it, it's looking incredibly good for Fusion Uni. Now they have ult advantage too, moving forward. Genji, they can't get tested. They're playing a very slow composition, no Lucio. Fusion and remember too, these are overtime spawns. Genji, even though Fusion Uni, if they lose one fight, it's over. If Genji loses a fight at all, you give up way more space than you would on a normal defense. See nice playing here on the flank, close to this dragon. A very strong combination versus Genji's comp, considering that there's no nano yet, no Valk just yet. Just save Halt Dragon, save Halt Dragon. Wait for Genji to get set up here. The fortify has already been used. Dragon out early here from Fusion University. Genji just gonna backstep, and oh, the Hall took Supercharger Alarm, just immediately minced on the point. Now here comes Wu Yao, nanoed up, ready to go. Whole hog out, 150 HP, brave. Full bravery and trusting your team to do that one instead of taking a breather. Moves forward, ends up falling. Fusion Uni not done yet, nice. Striking into the back line, has a decent flank. But now Fusion Uni needs to make sure they're on the point at all times. They have to deal with Oberon who's just dancing back and forth within the shield, a real impediment. And Genji bullying Fusion Uni on the objective, it stops here. And yet, even with the excellent opening there, the hook that set the stage, this is still very tough for Gen G because it took them a lot longer than a minute to get through first last time. Having Dorado first with a minute on the clock, it, it's it's just a it, it increases your chances of victory like 10, 20 fold almost, I want to say. I wish I had some actual stats to back it up, but it is such a hard map to get through, especially that first point with only a minute. Remarkably so. 
And the Junior, they're going to be on the defense now. And Junji, they're going to have to have a much cleaner offense, like we talked about. They're going to get through in this time. Easier said than done, to be sure. And you look at Fusion Uni as they move out here. They're not going to change anything from how they did their first attack. And why should they? I think that the double sniper has probably been their best look all night long. Dorado first, Dorado second, both very advantageous to it. And Gen G, uh, we'll see what openings they find. But a big part here is that when you look at Oberon on the engagements, Oberon really has trouble getting in without getting poked down. Both Nice and Still have been very good at just denying Winston free entry. And really the, the crux for Genji's top is that is, is the getting in portion. Because they're not playing Orisa, they're not playing Ryan, they don't have that extra barrier, they don't have the extra tankiness to get in. A lot of this is just ensuring that Oberon does not die on the entry, which is why Blister's on the Zarya, giving the bubble, trying to get Blister energy. But Fusion Unity, they know not to shoot the bubbles. You see Oberon, he catches the bubble, Zillow just ignores that, pops will key right behind him. And Snow has been really good about getting pickoffs that you don't normally see Widows get with any high regularity. Just getting the Brigida. Easier said than done. Oberon could be going up to the high ground. And Fusion Unity, they're more than willing to concede this first part of Dorado. They know they can't hold there for long. It's getting through the archway where things get incredibly difficult. The high ground is, is great for the initial contest, but Fusion Unity know that they can lose the high ground fight. It's already Jinji, they're entering. They use the bubble. They use the Matrix. They're in the great anti, though, under Beast Halo. Beast Halo down, and part of that was that Bernard was sleeping on the other side. He couldn't provide any peel for Beast Halo there. And Gen G, they're all super low. The dragon comes in, but everyone's still alive, and that's the important part. They can heal back up. Blister, though, in danger. Ends up falling. Beast Halo into the fight once more. It's still there in the fall through. We're in overtime. Last number two here for Gen G, and still cannot be stopped. One pick off after another keeps the firepower flowing. And Fusion Uni, they will not go down without at least a little bit to look at. They get the map. It's not enough for the series, but it's something. And we've talked about the dark tale of the MVP space. It's a tale that many won't tell you, but we have said it once again many times before, and it is important for Vision to get map score here. They're still sitting on the edge of playoffs. There's still always a chance they could get knocked out, so map score is very important. But Jinji continuing to look dominant. They're going to be undefeated still. Trying to vie for that first seed spot with the O2 block. Overall, looking like a very scary roster. Looking like a very scary roster, and also just not even throwing, putting Stalker out. Stalker didn't even play at all there. It is having Glister play the Sombra now. So very good for them. So for Fusion Uni, the struggles in Korea continue. Not the dominant Fusion Uni that we knew from North America. And yet, the same note, they've proven that they're able to be in the same realm as some of these top teams. The question is, can they put it all together and get to a point where they can take full series? They have a bit of the regular season to go and then potentially playoffs if they're able to secure that. But for Gen G, you have to commend them. Still undefeated. Not quite top overall in Korean contenders. Uh, map score wise, 0-2 over them. But certainly both teams looking very good. And the matchup between the two of them will be excellent. But all in all, guys, we're going to be taking a quick break when we come back, second series of the day.